What movie would be better if it didn't have a happy ending? Legend of Sleepy Hollow with Johnny Depp. The last 20 minutes of the film tie up all the loose ends, but they don't match the atmosphere of the rest of the film. It would have worked if they'd taken more time to establish his character as a good detective. They showed he was smart with science but he could have been more competent. Whoa, I didn't realize this was a real movie. I always thought it was a fever dream from when I was little. The Golden Compass the movie specifically made the ending a happy one, deviating from the source material in a major way. The movie stopped early, it wasn't really much of an ending the TV show is much much better. If you haven't yet you should watch his dark materials on HBO. It totally did the ending justice and I can't wait for season 2. The original script to Mrs. Doubtfire apparently had the parents getting back together, but they decided to go with the ending we know today instead to show kids that the world doesn't end just because mom and dad stay apart. Speaking as someone who grew up with parents that did nothing but shout and argue, I think the ending they went for is the happy one. By the end, they divorce and can be civil to each other. If they get back together, they're just back to square one. On a slightly separate note, I remember at the time thinking that it's okay for your parents to get divorced because of how the film laid it out. Although my parents didn't divorce till my adult years, I like to think that this film would have helped many kids not feel so guilty or shameful about their parents separating. I'm trying to remember from my childhood, but I am pretty sure divorce was a lot less common back then. I love that ending. It was so cathartic to hear someone telling you that your family wasn't bad because of divorce, that parents still love their children, and you are still a family. All while we see Daniel have his kids and the mom gets her sitter, in a way. It was a great one. An old one, but my fair lady. It's based on the play Pygmalion by Bernard Shaw, and in that version Eliza realizes Henry treats her terribly and she deserves kindness, so she leaves him. The musical slash movie version is the complete opposite of that and annoys me more than it should. Agreed, I thought her ending was kind of sad because of that. She lost all her old friends and her old life because she didn't fit into lower class society anymore, and now she has to settle for being married to her tutor who mainly likes showing her off and not her as a person. She doesn't even get her flower shop frown. Wonder Woman. The lesson near the end is that the god of war doesn't exist and it's just men who are fighting without supernatural encouragement. Then the real god of war arrives and that lesson gets ignored. It would have been better movie if they left out the god of war and Wonder Woman couldn't do anything to stop man's violent nature. Yeah they tried to work around that by having him say stuff like oh I only nudge them this is what they're really like. But yeah it kinda undermines the whole narrative of a naive WW who has to discover that this is the way the world works when there is a literal god of war pulling strings. Completely agree. I loved the movie up until the God of War CGI trash fight. Butterfly effect. The cliffhanger ending and bittersweet ending are better than the happy ending, as it's alternative ending movie. It makes more sense with the overall plot. That baby ending was crazy. I thought it fit the movie best of all the endings though. The haunting of Hill House. The original ending would have been dope. I loved that show. What was the original supposed to be? I think it gets the right amount of haunting and bittersweet, honestly. Like, the house is still out there, preying on people like the Dudleys, who get an honestly horrifying end, and the Cranes. Given how Olivia was looking at Stephen at the end, for all we know it's just a matter of time before the house manages to drag another one of them back. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Charlie and Grandpa Joe blatantly ignored Wonka's request that no one try the fuzzy lifting drink. The only reason Charlie was able to relinquish the gobstopper was because he was the only one to evade catastrophe. He, more esso Grandpa Joe, were no more deserving for the Empire than the other kids. Obligatory r slash Grandpa Joe hat. The stage musical is good. The fizzy lifting drink isn't in there, instead at the end Wonka says that the gobstopper counts as Charlie's year's supply of candy and is going to leave him with nothing. 
Grandpa Joe is mad but Charlie's okay with it, but leaves some ideas for candy in Wonka's notebook, and that makes Wonka give him the factory. Also three of the other children are explicitly killed on stage, Veruca has her limbs torn off by squirrels, Violet explodes, and Augustus is ground to bits, Wonka complains that he's going to have to pick his bones out of the chocolate. Yeah, that scene is not even either book. Fight Club Spoiler in the book he winds up in a psychiatric hospital, which let's face it, bit more realistic. Spoiler, he's convinced he's in heaven but the hospital is full of employees who are part of Project Mayhem and are plotting to get Tyler back, it's real fucker rude. Chuck actually liked the movie ending, thought it was better than his original ending. I liked the movie ending better. Not sure why. Has anyone read Fight Club 2 and or 3? I have many questions. Did the Fight Club movie have a happy ending? Seems like he destroyed civilization, he's bleeding from his neck into a dirty rag, he's surrounded by brainwashed mayhem goons, and Marla is functionally his prisoner. Always kind of wondered where he's going on that elevator. Subscribe for more hot reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.